welcome to the Hoop Theory Podcast. This is the Rajan Rondo episode, aka episode nine. Finally, I am reunited with the man, the myth, the legend, Jacob Roth. How's it going? I'm doing good. About thirty pounds heavier, but I'm I'm doing good. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time since we've got to talk about hoops in general, let alone on a like being on a podcast. So this will be fun. Sure. Yeah. To catch up on Jacob's um, you know, very valuable thoughts on the league. <laughs> um, I consider them valuable. A little bit yeah. misguided, but valuable. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think we're probably gonna start off with awards, it sounds like. Uh we don't have like a super strict plan for this. It'll just kinda go where it goes. Um but yeah, I think we're also recording this on a new software. Um, and we only have a, an hour to record, so that'll be a, a strict time limit. But yeah, so let's get into it. Let's talk about awards. Obviously, we should start with the the big, uh, the big honey bear in the room, Nikola Jokic, and uh, his MVP award. Whether or not he's going to take that home again this year or not, um, I, I heard a little bit from like just a taste from Jacob pre-recording. Um, cause it sounds like he's going to actually zag on this one. Um, so Jacob, who, who would you say would win the MVP instead of Nikola Jokic? Before I go in, like I, it's hard between Embiid and Giannis mm-hmm. because like Giannis lost his voter fatigue, but I still think Giannis is the best player in basketball, but that's not necessarily what the MVP always is. But I think it's a three man race. And that if you think anything else than that, you're stupid. Like, it's between those three, and I feel like Embiid is kind of slumped. Not as bad, but he's just not. It was Jokic and Embiid, and then Giannis started playing, well, I'd say, the past two weeks. But then Jokic is also elevated, so it's like this hard thing. I'd probably go kind of as a devil's advocate type of thing, Giannis, just because what he's done these past couple games, granted he has the surrounding group that uh, Jokic should have, but doesn't as of right now due to bad knees and bad backs. But like mm-hmm. it's it's you know it's gonna be super interesting coming down to it. Jokic had a great day yesterday, which makes it hard to be like, well, it's not Jokic because he was it was the first player to get two thousand points, a thousand rebounds, and seven five hundred assists, five hundred assists in mm-hmm. a single season. So there's just NBA history right there. That's not like a oh yeah, that's kind of cool. Uh, here's the list of forty people that have done that. Like no human has ever done that before, and it's yeah. the fat Serbian boy <laughs> that makes us yeah so. Mm-hmm. Also, I love the red headband. That made me smile. Yeah. Uh, did you see why he was wearing that? I saw the like hole in his head almost. Yeah. Is that yeah. why? Mm-hmm. Okay. And like the first minute of the game, Jaron Jackson Jr. just elbowed him right in the top of the head when he was going up for a rebound. And it, oh, it just boy. started gushing blood. Yeah. So, I saw a video of his trainer like hugging him. And he like got his yeah. head yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. I hope he keeps the headband. Throw back to Melo. I, I doubt he will, honestly. He, like, <laughs> didn't even... When they gave it to him to go back in the game, he, like, wouldn't put it on all the way up until he had, like, he was getting had on the to. court. Yeah. Like, he was <laughs> sitting on the, you know, scores table and everything, just holding it, like, looking at it. He wasn't putting it on. You could tell he didn't want to. Um, but, yeah, also, Russell Wilson uh, was at the game courtside. It was his first Nuggets game. Um, yeah, and they kept cutting to him. Yeah, because he also yeah. had his uh, first... He threw a pitch for the Rockies today. Oh, really? Opening day was la- yesterday, and Rockies had a game today, and he threw the opening pitch. So he's uh, doing the rounds in Denver. But we can talk yeah. about that on a in a different time <laughs> on a True. episode of the Jacob Ross Show, soon to return. More details yeah. somewhere in the mm-hmm. description. <laughs> yeah. So, um, no, I think picking Giannis, honestly, I can't get mad at that. I also, like, I, I feel like I agree with the uh, three man race. It's very clearly those three guys head and shoulders above the whole rest of the league. Um, and honestly, like it, it, my attitude towards it at this point is like, I would choose Jokic just, and that, you know, there's probably a little bit of bias there and I watch every game and have seen, you know, the way he's carried this team. So that's where I would be rooting for, I guess. And that's probably where I would put my vote, but yeah, Giannis and, and Embiid both have really good cases, but, um, I think Giannis is honestly the would be the second person. Like if I were to do a full ballot, one through five, I'd probably go Jokic, Giannis, Embiid, um, and then the next two probably honestly Luca would be four, 
maybe and Tatum's off the top fine. of my head. Tatum would be yeah, Tatum would be a good one for fifth. If five. he didn't have such a terrible beginning of the year, because like he's averaged and don't quote me, I want to say it's like thirty seven points since the All Star break. Like it's some like disgustingly high number. I'll check it mm-hmm. um, because that's just an audacious thing to throw around and not have the exact <laughs> number. But it's yeah. it's like a, a gross number after the All Star break um, in terms of points per game. But mm-hmm. yeah, the Celtics in general since the All Star break have been ridiculous. Um, so like and Rob Williams didn't he get a so he's getting like a surgery that to expedite his recovery. All right. So he had he got a surgery done, um, and this is kind of if you want to jump into defensive player of the year because my defensive player of the year surprise is a Celtic, and it's kind of like the reason that I wouldn't pick Marcus Smart. I think it should be a, a I don't think a big has been so dominant this year that it it should I think it should be McCall McCall Bridges and Phoenix or Marcus Smart. Hmm. Mark uh, Bridges has played all eighty two or is on pace. Don't jinx it. Knock on wood. Mm-hmm to play all 82 games, which is something that I saw. It was like five people have done this year. Only five players have been able to play all 82 and been present for all 82, which is an NBA low. So shout out to Bridges for doing that. And also the things he's doing defensively in terms of steals, shot contests. The thing that I'd give it to smart for is because Bridges doesn't do like, doesn't guard centers and fives the way that smart does. And not that smart guards them, but he does this like annoying thing But with Robert Williams, answer your question. Robert Williams is a big part of that because they do this weird thing with Robert Williams where they have him play off ball. And Smart and Grant Williams are part of this rotation that allows Robert Williams to just kind of ignore everything except for the man in the corner and protect the rim. And it just allows him to be the best basketball player he can be. They tried to do it last year, but they just didn't have the other big in Al Horford to take on the Embiid's or the the big man that's going to make moves happen and stuff. So, Mm -hmm. um Anyway, but yeah, he had actually, I heard the surgery went about as well as you can expect for meniscus surgery, which is awesome. Um, and I hadn't heard anything about another surgery. I knew that they were, they're shooting to have him back by, I think it was game three of the second round, but they don't want to rush him back and then have him just hurt it again. Uh, ergo, like a uh, KD in 2016 or whenever that was when he tore his uh, Achilles after coming back after having a hurt hammy. And then it just was like, they rushed him back. The Warriors did. Um, and it just wasn't great for his leg as he had to recover the entire next year. Um, Mm -hmm. But I have faith in the process. But, yeah, so there's my defensive player of the year. I don't think it should be Gobert. I I get why you would vote Gobert because he does defense things. But just Gobert gets put on an island very easily. And I don't know if you can attribute it to the system, but that's why Bridges, if people were like, I like Bridges, I wouldn't be mad because what Bridges does – is there's not a time where you're like, crap, he's in that situation, except for, like, Embiid has him on the block, but that's not, like, a... Yeah, yeah. Gobert has a plethora of other places on the court where if he's out there, it's a problem. It's not... It's He's not being a force. He's just stuck out there on an island. You know what I mean? Yeah. I I would say, though, that with Mikal, uh, you know, if he was playing Rudy's role, if he was, like, a rim protector, that would obviously be less than ideal. Um so, like, with, with Rudy Gobert, when he's, you know, doing what he's supposed to be doing, when he's, like, the anchor of the defense, um, protecting the paint, it's beautiful. But then the reason why, you know, there's a big hole in their system there is because nobody on the perimeter plays defense, like, at all. Because they're, you know, they're trained to funnel everything towards Embiid. And so if the team goes five out against them and pulls Embiid out, then they can drive past anybody and get to the rim. So it's like, I feel like it's more of a system problem or like a roster <clears throat> roster problem more than it is like a Gobert problem. Cause like if they had five go bears out there, it would be great. Like it's not that he can't necessarily hold his own to an extent in space. It's that there's no other like stop gaps anywhere in the defense other than him, you know? Like, I wouldn't say he's Mikal Bridges on the perimeter or anything like that, but I also yeah. wouldn't say he's like Danilo Gallinari out on the perimeter. Yeah, that makes sense. I just think that he's a liability on the perimeter compared to the liability I'd say Bridges is in the paint, if that makes sense. Oh, okay. Like, I see. Because I feel like Bridges is a very elite edge perimeter defender. 
mm-hmm. and his ability. I just think I value the ability to cover all five positions at a, and it's hard because then you get into the whole size thing, but I've watched a lot of Celtic Sixers, and that's why I keep bringing up Embiid, and he's one of the best centers in basketball in terms of just being a big, aggressive, old-school center, especially now that Ben Simmons is gone. Surprise, you open up the paint, and Embiid can do more in the paint things. Um, mm-hmm. I just think that I just watched Marcus Smart be annoying to bigs for long enough, and I've never seen a guard on the perimeter be annoyed by Rudy Gobert. Obviously, when you try to like go in and do a layup on Gobert, it's going to be annoying because he's just built different. Like, yeah. just he's a – yeah. So I can see where you're coming from, but I just think – also, the only side that I am worried about is, in terms of historically, the only time a guard has won it since Michael Jordan, I believe was Sean Kemp, and he was averaging like – Gary Payton. Gary Payton, not Sean Kemp. Wrong half of the time. <laughs> um, he was averaging like four steals a game or something mm. like that. Like it was some – or maybe three eight. It was like some high steals number, and yeah. Bridges or Smart don't have that number to be like, oh wow, like that's a crazy number. Because um, mm-hmm. I think blocks and steals are something that the numbers can they'll look similar ish. Like if somebody's got two blocks a game, it's similar to two steals a game in terms of value to the defense. Yeah, yeah, you could say so. Um, yeah, about also with Gobert though, I feel like just imagine him on like the Celtics trade him with Robert Williams. I feel like if you saw Gobert on that team, uh, you know, just how their entire defense, defense is so perfect. And offense comes later. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel like you wouldn't notice him being a liability on the perimeter at all. But that that yeah. also could be a big credit to, like, the rest of the defense, too, how it rotates and helps and everything. That would just be impossible to score against. I'd, be... I'd want him for Al Horford, <laughs> but no, it would be gross either way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um all right, so yeah, I guess if I had to make a decision with uh, defensive player of the year, I might lean Gobert maybe just because uh, I haven't, I guess, thought too hard on it, and he's like an easy answer. Um, but you know, Giannis is another one. I feel like you could bring up, um, or if you wanted to go the perimeter route with Marcus Smart or Mikal Bridges, um, Jared Vanderbilt, honestly, has been really good this season. I don't know if I would put him in there for DPOY, but uh, for, like, all defensive team, uh, that would be a good one. But yeah, um, I guess inconclusive on DPOY, but I'd probably just go go bear in a pinch. Um, and you said yours would be either Marcus Smart or Bridges? I'll go Bridges because there's less holes, I feel like, someone could argue in a Bridges argument than a Smart argument. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, that makes I'd sense. I'd smile if Smart won it. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the defense player of the year this year uh, is kind of weak compared to most years. Well, um, there's usually some force where you're like, yeah, he had three and a half blocks a game. Mm-hmm. Here's the award guy. Like, yeah. It's just over. Or there's like a really good race like a couple years ago with AD and Giannis. I thought uh, both were really good that year. But this year it's kind of underwhelming. Um yeah, so the next award, what would you say is the next most important award behind MVP and DPOI? Um, Maybe Rookie of the Year? Well, it depends on what kind of team you're on. Because if you're like the Thunder, Rookie of the Year. You don't care about <laughs> Most Improved. Your Most yeah. Improved doesn't do anything for you. So, I, yeah, we can go uh, Rookie of the Year. Yeah, we'll go Rookie next. All right, so um, this is also a really tough one. There's a lot of really good candidates this year. Um like early in the season and throughout most of the year, I would say Evan Mobley would have been my pick. But at this point, with how far the Cavs have been sliding, and also I'm not sure right off the top of my head how many games he's played. Um, 67. Okay, so it's a decent amount. Cade Cunningham has been the one that I feel like has he's played made a really good push lately. Giddy didn't play enough. Scotty Barnes is a name that I've thought about the way the Raptors have been playing. He's uh-huh. been a super integral part of a team that's very scary. Yeah, um, for sure. And yeah. It's, there's a lot of um, – as much as I love Jalen Green as a personality, just at an it press interview going, what have you learned about yourself this rookie year? I'm a bucket. <laughs> Which I, I, I don't understand that. Also, I have a new love for uh, Anthony Edwards, but he's not a rookie, unfortunately, so that's a not-votable yeah. thing. Um, I think I'd go Mobley still, 
just and I know it's hard because it's just what he meant to a team that achieved so much more than all these other guys' teams. Scotty Barnes, you could throw in there, mm-hmm. but and then it it turns into well, was it just because of what they were thrown into? Like Cleveland was just two flamethrowers at guard. They just needed a big to step in and try to play basketball to replace Kevin Love's minutes. Like that's just all they needed. And mm-hmm. then Kevin Love is like, oh, maybe I'll try again because. You can't pretend that Kevin Love tried or cared about basketball the past like two years. That's just not mm. a realistic thing to say or do. <laughs> so, um, and then Jared Allen, uh, he's part like so. Then it gets into like what's built better for these like Scotty Barnes also walked into a great situation where it's just like here's a bunch of other tall, athletic. It's like you played in college, except it's NBA people now. We're gonna play hard defense. We're gonna keep up with teams. But I, I think I'd give it to Cleveland just because like. We knew Toronto had talent that could go far and win you basketball games, and Cleveland was still a question mark. Like Evan Mobley was a top three pick. Mm-hmm. I guess Scotty Barnes was top five, wasn't he? Wasn't yeah, he, he was fourth. Pick with, oh, fourth. He was fourth. Yeah. But yeah, so, yeah. yeah I, I don't know. It, it gets harder. I'm, I think I'd give it to Mobley, despite the the slide, which is a good way to put it. I think that Cleveland's had, um, but he was out for a lot of it. Like he, they, they. I think he missed not a lot of it. He missed like five or six games, and I think they won one game in that stretch. If I'm remember, like they and they played some good teams in the East, which is going to lead to losses too. When you play, you, they played Milwaukee, I believe, and they had to play. They're playing Brooklyn tonight, and I don't know how that game's going, but um, mm-hmm. yeah. So, but he's back tonight. I think. I think Mobley's coming back tonight. So, yeah, I, I think it's Mobley. Yeah, I can't argue with that. Really. Um... I think it's honestly. I think it's between uh, Barnes and Mobley with me. Cade has been he's he's made a nice push, but um, I think the percentages for him are just you know they don't look too great. And you know you combine that with the lack of team success, it's just kind of underwhelming case for him. But he does seem like a really intriguing player moving forward, and I, like I feel like he's going to turn out really good. Um. So yeah, I've. I don't know, Scotty Barnes. I'm just gonna since you you chose Mobley, I'll go Scotty Barnes, just to make it feel balanced. Um, uh, so now I'd I'd say the next most important one is Coach of the Year, in my opinion. Yeah. Is. Um, yeah. So let's go Coach of the Year. This one I actually thought about a little bit today for the first time, um, all season. Um, and I guess where I arrived was. Do you, like, do you have a top three? Do you want to go, like, three to one and reveal it that way? I... Yes. Okay. I'll give you my Hold third. On. I have to divide... Which, I have to decide between who my third... The second and third are? And that's That one's no, hard No, my third too. and fourth. Oh, third and fourth. Okay, I got it. I'm ready. Okay. So my third... Um... Yeah, my third is probably going to be Monty Williams. He's very close to second and honestly kind of first for me too. Uh, but I'd, I'd probably put him at three. Monty Williams with the Suns. What about you? My three, I got to make sure that I have the right team to coach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Taylor Jenkins in uh, Memphis. He had a lot of pieces. He built them up. And now they were – they have John, they have all that. But I, I think he's done a nice job. Um, so Jenkins is my third. It was mm. with the Udoka, but he had a terrible first half of the year, and I get he had to figure out his players and all these things, but coach of the year, it's not coach of the after the All-Star break. So mm-hmm. that is why I had it as my. So my third would be Jenkins, I think. Yeah, fair. Um, my second, I would probably put Eric Spolstra. Um, just because of how many injuries the Heat have gone through this season. Um, you know, Kyle Lowry was really their only main guy that kind of stayed healthy for the most part. They lost Bam for like half the season. Same with Butler. Um, so it's, it's been impressive. It's been impressive to see them become like, you know, the top of that Eastern conference, uh, basically all season long. Um, even, even with all those injuries. So yeah, he's my second one, Eric Spolstra. My second is Chris Finch. Maybe I just value the rebuild too much as I'm going through these. Uh, T-Wolves head coach. They also turned on a dime. They had a lot of talent. But the thing that this is also, I said coach of the year last time, and this is kind of counteracting that point. 
there was a stark difference between the Timberwolves last year when they made the coaching change. Um, when they, yeah, when they swapped sure. to Chris Finch midway through the year, and he did all this without practices last year, without all these things. Um, and this T-Wolves team is, a, I think, a scary team going into the playoffs. Like, if you get them coming out of the play-in, I would not be thrilled. I'd be like, well, that stinks. We could have gotten a lot better options because the T-Wolves can randomly just show up one day and be like, we're going to drop 140. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Like, and that's just what they'll do, you know, and that's just – um. And their and their defense has been improving. I'm not going to say it's good. Like your defensive anchor is like cat. That's not true. They have some um, other guys around them. Vando. Jared, yeah. Um. But yeah. No. I. Uh, I'm a big fan of Finch. So that's my two. Mm-hmm. No, that's a good one. Um. Yeah. So my number one is actually Taylor Jenkins, who you had at three. Um. Just because I think the the Grizzlies have made the biggest, you know surprise this season out of all the teams that outdid expectations. Um, and also their record without jaw is like phenomenal as well. So yeah, I feel like a big, you know, nod to be given to um, a just culture and coaching there, I guess for that um, credit, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, Taylor Jenkins, I think he's, in my book, I would probably put him number one. Um, but really, all three of those guys, Taylor Jenkins, Eric Spolstra, Monty Williams, and then also Chris Finch, I think would I would probably have fourth, and then Yudoka at five. Um, so yeah, all those guys. But I think Taylor Jenkins gives it, or is who I would give it to. What about you? Uh, my one is Monty Williams. Um, mm-hmm. Just, And I get that they had, they were good last year, but like to continue that, to keep the guys all on the same page. Um, mm-hmm. Best record in the NBA, and it's not close. I I have Monty Williams. But honestly, I feel like we said, like, oh, it's a really close top three, and then you kind of threw in four. I feel like a name that I thought of when I was, like, thinking of this, like, a while ago, um, but then they had a slide. We talked about the Cavs, Bickerstaff. Oh, Bickerstaff, yeah. He's a guy that I was like, you had the pieces there, but somebody had to put them together. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I thought he was, but they've had that slide recently. And when it comes down, people recency bias, people remember what just happened. Um, like they remember the things that just happened. That's why Marcus Smart's going to win defense player of the year. Cause of that sick block on Giannis. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. Kidding. But, um, <laughs> but no, like that's, um, it's stuff like that. But no, so my, I guess my three were Monty Williams was my one. Um, mm-hmm. my two was Jenkins. And then my three was, um, I oh, can't uh, for Chris Finch. Yeah, Chris Finch yeah. was your other one. What was my second one. I'm blind. yeah, yeah. Sorry, I had <laughs> no. the teams and not the coaches, so I had to Google the coaches, which mm-hmm. I feel bad, but I am not built like that. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I can definitely see the case for Monty Williams at one being you know best team, best record, everything like that, and also like people forget about the whole Robert Sarver dilemma thing, the investigation and stuff. How at the beginning of the year, when that first kind of dropped, everybody was like, oh, hopefully the Suns can, you know, stay focused and hopefully this doesn't hurt them too much. And then they rattled off like 20 wins in a row after that. Um, it's pretty, I think, you know, coaching could have a lot to do with that, keeping the culture and everything really centered and focused on basketball and, you know, bring the team closer together instead of like having the drama split them up or whatever. Um so yeah, I think Monty Williams is a good good choice there too. I'm too impressionable. I could I could really make a case for like anybody for a lot of the awards. So it's kind of hard to narrow them down. I just have to go by my gut. Um, yeah. So our next one, I would probably go. Uh, what do you think? Six man or most improved? Let's go six man. Okay, I think this one is one of the more obvious ones. Do you think so? Probably. I would say, like, Tyler Hero um, would be six yeah. man of the year. You forget he doesn't start. And yeah. I feel like that's when it's, like, a player where you're like, yeah, you kind of forget, like, oh, wait, he doesn't start? <laughs> yeah. How many games has he started this year? Ten? He started ten out like, of 65. Like, be in the race? Like, I'm going through teams that have, like, a guy that comes off. Uh, you'd have... <clears throat> Clarkson, Clarkson won it last year. Yeah. Oh, that's probably um, why Clarkson popped into my head. 
Yeah. But yeah, it's Hero. I th- I'd say pretty definitively. Yeah. I'm trying to think, honestly, of, of somebody else that would be close. Like Memphis, I guess there's like Tyus Jones, but I don't think he would be in the running. Um, Previously mentioned of uh, Kevin Love. Kevin Love. Yeah, another one. <laughs> good Warby good awesome. bench piece. Yeah. So, on, yeah, he honestly. I, with us. Yeah. I bet. Honestly, I, I don't really see anybody else in Heroes tier on that one. Um, so yeah, that was easy. And then most improved player is next. Um, this one I think is always there's so many candidates for this every year. Um, but mine would honestly probably be Jaw. I don't know who you would take. Okay, I've got two names, and neither of them are Jaw because okay. he was good last year. Yeah, but he wasn't a top. Jordan Poole is one. Mm-hmm. And Robert Williams the third is the second one. Oh, yeah, those are both good. And they're like, more, also they're... more traditional picks, too, with it. Yeah, like, like a star improving doesn't get the same, like, oh, remember mm-hmm. this guy was, like, almost a bust and people thought he was going to be, like, not that they ever had Jordan Poole in that level, but, like, I know that there was a lot of uh, – Loser Celtics fans that were down on Robert Williams. Um, mm-hmm. Also, sue me. I'm a homer, people of the internet. It's not a homer because I don't live there, but... Yeah, no, it's... <laughs> um, so, yeah. I I said the boo to Jaw. That's... Jaw's substantially, like, how he turned into a next-level uh, player is... It's fair. Who's in... Is there any other names? Desmond Bain was another one I was thinking of. They're both on the Grizzlies. Yeah. Um, uh, but he's a second year player and a lot of people don't like to give it to second year players because you get that natural jump when you're a second year player anyway mm-hmm. uh, Darry, uh, looking at NBA's odds oh Darius Vegas's Garland odds. yeah he's the other one Darius Garland, DeJounte Murray um, yeah. and then it's kind of a big uh, Miles Bridges is there Desmond Bain is on there at plus um, 5,000 Jordan Poole's on there as well no Robert Williams I don't know why but um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, is John, John on there? what they have is the top. Yep, he's oh, the most do. likely to win. Oh, wow. Huh. Minus I had 600. No idea. Yeah, it sounds right to me. I'll, and I, yeah, I forgot about Garland, though, but he's, he honestly might be my second. Um, Just because last year, like, he was, like, barely, you know, like, there were, it was only, like, very little glimpses of like, oh, this guy could be their lead guard, you know, guy to build around. And this year is like, all of a sudden he's there already, you know? Um, yeah. DeJounte Murray, another one this year was really big leap. So. Well, and especially after, good. uh, Devin White got traded, they've, he's played super well, mm-hmm. like a big reason they had a chance at the play in. Yeah, true. And they're still in the plan, aren't they? I think they got it, actually, because the Lakers got eliminated. Yeah, so they're in yeah. the play mm-hmm. and he was a big part of that. Next thing we could talk about, we could either go to playoffs next or we could go to something that Jacob texted me about recently uh, for a pod idea. Uh, Let's do to that. Talk... I like that. Okay. Let's talk about LeBron's legacy then uh, for this season because the Lakers, obviously, uh, big, big uh, I don't know what to call it, just train wreck of a season, I guess. Um, just a terrible show all the way around for everybody who's a Lakers fan, which is kind of funny to be honest. Um, my only, you know, joy of following the Lakers this year at all has been just watching Carmelo climb the all time scoring list a little bit, (laughs) but, uh, everything else has just been entertaining. Um, I do at times feel a little bit bad for us, but you know, um, yeah. It's whatever. The thing, though, that Jacob uh, proposed to me was the question of, like, LeBron's legacy, uh, I assume in, like, the GOAT debate and everything, how much this year should be weighed into that. Um, And I guess, did you have any... Yeah, so I think you could go both ways with it. Like, Mm -hmm. it'll help, as in showing that, like, look at this... Granted, it's, if you really look at it, it's not the same team he had two years ago. But, like, because AD was a different player. They had this great defensive core, and it just was LeBron, AD, 
go score baskets. And then they just traded that all away. Why? The world may never know. Um, <laughs> but but on the on the bad side of it, the way he's like been, he's gotten numbers. I mean, yeah, he wasn't for, for sure. a while, but he's 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 put up a. Um, also, I have another. So the scoring title. This also ties into this a little bit. LeBron has a scoring title by point two points. He does. He get, yeah. Oh, wow. had it when I last looked. I don't know about Jokic's game yesterday. If Jokic jumped him. No, no, Jokic isn't that high. He's like um, twenty seven points. What, or maybe it was after I saw a statistic, uh, uh, a page that said that he had the scoring title, and coincidentally he got the scoring title, like scored enough. And then stop playing, meaning his points per game would change. Yeah, but that's still a checkable thing to see if he still has the scoring title. Yeah, he, and look, he's slightly behind Embiid now. Oh, he is behind because Embiid just dropped forty five the other night and took it. Yeah. So, but it was like I thought that was kind of weird. But in terms of the legacy debate, they like people. I feel like it's dumb that we have two sides the way we do. Like LeBron's great. That's mm-hmm. not a debate. It's, it, he's a great basketball player. But you have the two sides that are so stark. Well, MJ did it with this many All-Stars, and LeBron did it, or LeBron did it with this, and then blah, 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 blah. But this year was like a – MJ didn't have a year that was this, like – like even his Wizards year, they were more competitive than the Lakers ended up being. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's like a – I would argue that MJ was at the next stage of his career, like even more – I don't want to say dilapidated, but like even more like, okay, Father Time's knocking on the door than LeBron is now. Yeah, he was farther from his peak at that point than LeBron. Yes, yeah. and mm-hmm. and that's another thing on the LeBron side of of having the positive. Like, you could argue like LeBron's peak was Miami, into Cleveland, yeah, almost into the first year in LA before like the whole world collapsed and he started getting injured and stuff. But mm-hmm. like. He's not that. He's and he's playing at a high level. Like we're talking about him playing for the scoring title at thirty-seven or thirty-six. Seven, thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. Mm-hmm. Like that. I'm not trying to take it, but how much does this year in the future detract from? Like, oh, we'll remember that 2020 year or 2022 year when LeBron just couldn't carry, couldn't do, couldn't do the thing on himself, and also the people say MJ built his team with people around him. You can't say LeBron doesn't do the same things, and LeBron has not been as successful this time around. Like, (laughs) relying on his buddy Russell Westbrook, which I said I also feel bad for him sometimes. Um, Granted, on defense, he makes some baffling decisions. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't think he needs that much hate. Do I think he's worth what he got paid? No. Do I think he should be playing basketball next year? Yes. Like, I know a Lakers fan that does not think Russell Westbrook should be in the NBA. And I'm like, okay, that's a bit dramatic. Mm-hmm. Like, just as much as LeBron got told to carry the Lakers when LeBron and AD aren't playing, Russell Westbrook has handled this burden. Like, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like when Carmelo kind of went out of the league and uh, stuff like that where he's, like, not good enough to be, like, the upper echelon player anymore, but his play style has to be one of those things. So it's like nobody really wants him at that point. Um, so he has to yeah. adjust a little bit if he's going to, you know, still be a valuable player. I feel like, cause if like, you know, the alternative would be, he's still what Russell Westbrook are, has always been and just be that engine that carries the team. Like where, where, what team wants that right now? You know, yeah. like there's and not a lot of teams. Might, like you can go through all third or the teams that need it to have it. For example, mm-hmm. the Celtics. Marcus Smart is that guy. We don't want – and he is also the defensive side. But then you go to – let's. I heard somebody say some stupid thing. He should go mentor John Morant. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But, like, does that team need an engine to go fire up, let's go rah, rah? No. There are no. a bunch of young dudes that are so young they don't know what to be scared of. I talked about this with Atlanta last year. They were so in such a big moment about – like. You could argue they had Milwaukee on the ropes. It's like a weird whatever you want to say. But, like, they didn't know that they were supposed to be like, oh, this is kind of a big deal. We might never make it back here. We should probably be pretty scared. That just didn't – like, they were too, like, novice to know. And they didn't have any vets on that team, like, at all. Like, it was just a bunch Mm -hmm. of guys being like, yeah, college basketball was fun. Yeah. So, yeah, it was – 
And that just kind of popped in my head because it was right when he, uh, right when like they're like, oh, are the Lakers going to miss the playoffs? That's right when all this talk started spurting. So I heard it more and more and more, and that's what made me think of it. But it'll be interesting to see when it's all said and done. Advice for people in the now: appreciate LeBron's greatness, appreciate Tom Brady's greatness, appreciate Tiger Woods' greatness as he's, I believe, top ten in the Masters, tied for tenth in the last yeah. time I looked. I just um, know he's doing after good. A, after yeah. a terrible car, like appreciate greatness while you're able to watch it. Cause there's times where Nebraska fan, I, I'm just bummed. I couldn't watch Tommy Armstrong, not Tommy Armstrong, Tommy Frazier. <laughs> I got to watch Tommy. Armstrong. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't watch Frazier break 15 Florida tackles. Like I couldn't, mm-hmm. I didn't even see that greatness live. So appreciate greatness while you can. Mm-hmm. Very true. Um, yeah. So, I think, like what you said, uh, LeBron, his this whether it helps or not, <clears throat> I think it will do both. Like it'll be like the people who are LeBron haters already will use it as fuel to you know for their fire, and you know for the LeBron stands they'll use it for them as well. Like he's thirty seven years old, averaging thirty points a game. That's pretty ridiculous. Um, I, I kind of lean. Honestly, that it helps more than hurts. Um, just because th- this roster is complete garbage. Everybody knew that before the season started. Anybody worth, you know, their grade, like, I can't think of phrases so. right now. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so anybody that knew much about basketball could see that, like, this roster doesn't make sense at all. Um, feels like something needs to really change for it, them to become successful. And, you know, nothing really did. And instead, they just have been not healthy at all on top of it. So that doesn't help either. But, yeah, LeBron scoring 30 points a game, though, at age 37, like, that's unprecedented. You know, that's like next-level like, Kareem stuff. And it's like effortlessly, effortlessly scores 30. Like, you mm-hmm. watch a game, and LeBron has 15 quietly somehow as LeBron James. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not quiet because he always has the ball and you always hear his name. But, like, an announcer, <laughs> if LeBron does anything, freaks out. But, like, for, like, a whatever player, you'll be like, oh, wow, they have 15 already. That's mm-hmm. kind of crazy. And then he'll turn yeah. around at the end and hit a shot or whatever. But it's it's not like a James Harden style. Like, that's the two styles I call. Like, a, a quiet 30 and a James Harden 30 are very different things. Because James Harden's always, like, Oh wow, it's crazy. He's on fire. Right? He's so streaky that you know he's like but LeBron just like here's a bucket, two possessions later another bucket. So, mm. it's a quiet 30, which is even more impressive that it's not this like streaky, hot streak reliant type of scoring. Yeah, that makes sense. Um Yeah, so we're I guess we're in agreement on that. There's no fiery takes in there. Um maybe we'll toss that one to Anthony next time we're together. <laughs> <laughs> see what he has to say <clears throat> but I guess on the flip side like, and you said it perfectly MJ or LeBron stands or LeBron haters they'll find a way they like they do every single event for example our beloved Fred Anthony that was just previously mentioned still refers to the 2020 bubble season as LeBron's Mickey Mouse championship Mickey Mouse ring yeah His, yeah yeah Le Mickey <laughs> Le Mickey so yeah um, like there'll be fuel for both sides, but appreciate the greatness. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. Um, so yeah, that I guess we that covers that topic. Um, I'm just gonna pull up the standings real quick so we can look at the playoff picture. Um, also, pretty important game going on right now on my other monitor, Cleveland and Brooklyn. Um. Haven't been watching too closely, but that one's going to be pretty big for both those teams. Because I think, yeah, oh, Cleveland can't. It'll, it'll, it'll decide, decide who's who gets home. home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that will be big. Yeah. What's crazy is like a month ago, Brooklyn probably tries to lose that game. As dumb as that sounds, because then they get Kyrie and Cleveland. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's just crazy to think that that was like a genuine thought they had to have. And then if they win tonight, though, that also, if let's say Toronto goes on a crazy run, 
it would keep them out of Toronto where Kyrie can't play until the Eastern Conference Finals if they do win tonight and slip into that seventh. And not, it doesn't have to be tonight. But if they win out or the seventh seed, they go through Milwaukee. They go through who would be Bo- uh, Boston or Chicago right now. Mm-hmm. Like they go through all those. They wouldn't have to play in Toronto at all until the Eastern Conference. Granted, Toronto has to win a lot of series. They probably shouldn't. But um, that's something that it's like crazy to think that there's all these little things going on um, in the East. Not so much, I think, in the West, but in the East. Hmm. Yeah, true. That is pretty big. I th- yeah, the plane is definitely much like tighter in the East. In the West, it's like there's pretty big drop off from seven to eight, and then a drop off from eight to nine. So see. Also, it's is like, Curry back for the playoffs? Is that decided yet? I, I honestly don't know. Because your Nuggets That's are a in a question. mighty fine position at the moment. If Curry's not going to be back for the playoffs, yeah, not even a free if, win, but yeah, even if he is, though, I think that's who I would prefer to play first round over the Mavericks. I think yeah. I prefer the Warriors. So, uh, and oh, honestly, you can't switch with Minnesota anymore. Mm-hmm, yeah, you can Yeah, you can't drop into the plan. Yeah. So, like, the only thing that we can do is move up to five if the Jazz lose. Uh, and we win our last game, um, and then we'd be playing the Mavericks. So, which would not be, yeah, I wouldn't love that. Um, also, Mavericks have two games left, and Warriors have two games left. So the Mavericks and Warriors could technically flop, like foot flop two, three, four. So, <laughs> hopefully, the Warriors stays in three, and Nuggets stay in six. Would be my hope because, or they both go to four five. But if that, yeah. But if that happens, then we're on the Sun side of the bracket. Phoenix. I'd rather be on the Grizz, the Grizzly side of the bracket. Don't you mean the T Wolves side of the bracket? I'm just. (laughs) Or the T Wolves that would be even better. I love the T Wolves. Also, I was talking. I was watching. I had a buddy's birthday. We were going to go to the uh, Denver T Wolves game on the first. Um, oh yeah. Didn't end up going because we were like, that's a whole thing. So we watched it together, and I was like, I had this like, because Minnesota beat the brakes off of uh, Denver that game. Like, mm-hmm. Minnesota looked, that's a little bit dramatic. But they looked, Minnesota looked really good. And then at that point, if Denver didn't win out or didn't win um, enough game, like Minnesota could have jumped in and sent Denver down into the play-in, which would have been a whole, whole thing. But it did, yeah. it, it did not end up happening or mattering at all. But. Because the West uh, play-in's locked in now, right? It's order is locked, and it's just how it is. Yeah, I think so. Um, Spurs have two more games. So it, depending on whether or not the Spurs have the tiebreaker over the Pelicans, because um, if the Spurs do have the tiebreaker over the Pelicans and the Pels lose they their could last two. They jump up to nine. Yeah. But your people are locked, and I think on the East they have the people locked now. Yeah, because Charlotte's got 41 as opposed to Washington's. 35. Yeah. Yeah, pretty big drop there. Which, Charlotte yeah. Atlanta could flip. Oh, wow. I didn't even realize how 7, 8, 9, 10 are all right there. Mm-hmm. In the East? Yeah, so that could be kind of go anywhere. Yeah. But honestly, it's Brooklyn, and I, I really think it's Brooklyn and Cleveland coming out of that. I mean, unless Trey goes super sand for the playoffs, but I just don't. I could see the I don't Hawks think... getting in there over Cleveland. I could see it. Um, okay, so let's I, say Brooklyn loses tonight. That would knock them below Atlanta. Atlanta would mm-hmm. be the, the would play Cleveland. Do you take so you would take the Hawks and Hawks would be the seventh seed. And then yeah. that would leave Brooklyn and Atlanta or Brooklyn and Cleveland rather Cleveland. playing first spot in, and it would be Brooklyn. I'd assume. Mm-hmm. Or Charlotte, yeah. No, there's no. They're honestly all in there. I don't have one faith. Ga- in I, one game scenarios, anything could happen. Like that. Okay. See, that's the other thing that I forget. Also, did you see that Daryl Moore was like, "We should have a uh, one game uh, playoffs in the for the first three rounds of the NBA uh, battle <laughs> playoffs." Really, because you have James Harden and Joel Embiid on a team. Did he really say that? Notorious... Yeah, he like was like, or maybe it was to three games. He was pretty mm. much pushing to make his roster be like optimized, pre-optimized. Like, oh yeah, we can't really uh, win a seven-game series, but guess what? Three games, we look great. <laughs> Smaller sample. That's not true. Joel Embiid hasn't really shriveled up in game sevens. 
um, like his bearded counterpart. But yeah, not too bad. There was last year he kind of had like, but he he was injured too. He had the meniscus. Yeah, he, he was, was playing, playing through. through. Who knows what he was playing through? Yeah, he, yeah. Mm-hmm. I as much as I don't want to like Embiid, I do at the same time because he's just like a. Also, how he handled the Ben Simmons thing. He could have drugged that kid through the mud. Uh huh. And outside of his one comment, like, "Well, we had that one chance for a layup in the in the fourth quarter that didn't really go down." Other than that, he was pretty much clean. Like, didn't get too fired up. Didn't get as in, you would expect him be to, based on the person persona that's been built around him. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah, it's kudos to him. Mm-hmm. Compared to what he, yeah, and maybe that's him getting older and being farther away from being just young and dumb, you know. But mm-hmm. uh, I thought that was really impressive how he, like, because he could have made Ben Simmons even more hated in Philadelphia than he was. Because Joel Embiid's probably the most loved person in Philly since, like, ever, possibly. Because, like, I'd like to say, like, Donovan McNabb, but there's Philly fans that don't like Donovan McNabb. Yeah. Nick Foles is, well, no, Nick then Foles. he screwed it the next year. No, he was loved for a very brief time. After he was, oh, really? like, the, the, yeah, well, no, because he came back and they're like, you yeah, know, you ain't it, brother. Oh, he came back? When was that? The next year, like, the, when he went to start the next year. Oh, next after season. After he won the okay. Super Bowl. I thought I remember just, like, last year or something, a bunch of Eagles fans wanting Nick Foles to come back. I thought it was as a joke. Maybe they did. I don't oh, know. Ma- Philly fans are hard to read. Know. Yeah. They're very uh, up and down. For example, they wanted <laughs> – uh, so, quick NFL news. Calvin Ridley got caught with betting on games that he participated in. Mm-hmm. Which Heard about is not that. okay. Philly fans then decided that their receiver, Jalen Rieger, who did not bet on games, was betting on games and tried to get him kicked off the team. Oh, yeah. And their reasoning was, there's no way he's that bad at catching a football unless he's got some money on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... The magic of the of city's Philly. brotherly love. Yeah. But yeah. Anyways, I, I'm uh, excited for this play. I've, I feel like there's always things to be excited for in the playoffs, but like... Dallas not having especially. the Clippers round one, pumped for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for like, sure. I don't that know was how two long years in a row. Could... And it was always like, okay, yeah, you can put Kawhi. Like, you found the anti Luca device. That's not fun. Like, yeah. let him cook a little bit. Well, and he's, he cooked, he's, still, but... he's still averaged like 35 or 36 per game. Dallas needs yeah. to find somebody else. And I know they tried with Chris Tapps. They just need somebody else to help that mm-hmm. man. Cause... He got injured both years of the playoffs in a row. He got injured like game two or game three. Um, I just don't think Luka Ball works for the history of forever. But that could be another – I feel like you could do a whole episode on how Luka Ball, historically, the concept of it, not mm-hmm. that it's Luka Ball inherent. Like you could call yeah. it Mellow Ball. Le- LeBron you could call, Ball. Like, there's, a, the, mm-hmm. there's how it just doesn't lead to a whole lot of success unless you have – because uh, even LeBron, when it was LeBron ball, didn't super work. He had, oh, yeah, Kyrie and Kevin Love. Yeah, no, but like original had... Cleveland team, I would say, is the LeBron you know, ball. Mm, without yeah. other stars. And then you, yeah, he's mm. like, when he when he finally did win, not just a lot of games, but win things that mattered, playoff series, things like that, it wasn't, it didn't, mm-hmm. it didn't work. Yeah. The Jazz is another example. That's not quite as bad with Mitchell. Like, they have other guys that do stuff. Um, yeah, and, he, so and it's not all centered. Yeah, it's not really centered around him either. Uh, D Wade uh, without Shaq. Yeah. Yeah, there's um, a bunch of examples that we could you could find that like Luka Ball doesn't win you championships necessarily, or it just doesn't. Yeah, like, it, ha- it doesn't. hasn't. It's never. Ha- yeah, it never has with that much heliocentric stuff. Basically, when your your lead scoring like person is also your lead ball handler. Is basically what it is. Like whenever okay, that yeah. is the case, that's usually you know not the best because <laughs> there's just too much load on one person uh, for it to really work. Uh, Russell Westbrook is another good example of somebody that has done that in the past, and it doesn't usually lead to a lot of success. It's usually just like kind of mid tier. But yeah, um, no, the playoffs this year are super. Like, like, there's just so much open, like anything could happen, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like, I know we say that, I feel like we've said that the past couple of years, but this year, especially it's like, I don't love anybody for the title. Like if you had, if you ask me point blank right now, like who I have for the title, I honestly, I have no idea. 
My only thing is I, I'd go Suns. Like, if it was, like, a gun to my head, pick one. If you're wrong, you die. I'd yeah. go Suns just because they've looked. But, like, if I get – okay, let's say I get Miami. I don't actually like Miami. So, let's say I get a healthy Brooklyn. Ben Simmons comes back, and they say don't touch a basketball on offense. But you know what you can do? Pick a guy. Don't let him score. Ben Simmons would be like, mm. Yes. And let's say he's healthy and he's back. That's what he wants. Then Brooklyn would be terrifying. They have Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and Andre Drummond, the trio. Uh And Seth Curry is also a super underrated loss. It's more a loss for Philly than a gain for Brooklyn, in my opinion. And I don't know if I ever sent it in the group chat between me and Anthony. I was like, I think you gave up a lot for Harden. I get if you were getting 2015, should have been MVP Harden that you do that deal every day. But it's also not fair because everybody thought he was kind of sandbagging in, in Brooklyn and in Houston before that. Like, you thought he was just kind of going through the motions. But maybe that's just new Harden. He's kind of old. He can't yeah. draw fouls like he used to. Maybe that's just what Harden is. But, like, so I like Brooklyn in that case. Who knows what happens in Philly? I don't love Philly, actually. Toronto, The East? Exactly. Everybody just, like, you're scared of picking. I, that's how I am, at least. Everybody because scares I don't, me. I don't, how does Robert, if Robert Williams comes back how he was, I'd like the Celtics to come out of the East, but to win the whole thing, if they run into Phoenix, I don't think they – let me rephrase that. I don't think I would bet my life on them winning that series. Like, I think it'd be a fun game of, like, a great, great seven, series of seven or six to watch. But mm-hmm. Milwaukee, the Giannis in the playoffs, I just kind of forget that they, like, just let him do what he wants, and he, like, just – Scores. I for, actually Milwaukee. I'd feel pretty okay with throwing them in the. Yeah, they'd probably be I'd, my number one in the East if I had to pick somebody. Yeah. The only thing with them though is they're so <clears throat> they're so shallow. Like they don't have a lot of uh, depth on their roster. Um, and I thought th- at the trade deadline they didn't do super well with that. With I mean they got Ibaka. But which I kind of forgot about until right now. <laughs> but they <laughs> traded away uh, DiVincenzo, um, who had just come back and was just kind of you know catching his stride again. So, and like I feel like that's where they really needed somebody. And then right after they traded DiVincenzo, Connaughton went down for the season, didn't he? Or is he back? He's back now. He was down for a while. Okay. I believe he is back now. Mm-hmm. Oh, he had, he broke his hand. Yeah. And it's a four week. We'll be back second round approximately, I believe. Okay. If I can do math right. Yeah, makes sense. Um. So. Yeah, if you can't tell, I haven't been paying attention as much this season as I have the past couple. But I am trying to get back into it now, especially with this playoff starting, because it's like, it's so anything could happen right now. Like, I don't know. This is like the perfect, it's like such a March madnessy type feel. I feel like, um, cause usually the NBA playoffs go pretty decently like chalk, you know, higher seeds tend to win for the most part. But this year, I, I don't know. I, I really have no idea what will happen. Bulls are kind of a sad story to be honest. Um, cause they were going to be, you know, they were at the top of the East for a while, but now who knows with the Bulls, what's going to happen. Yeah, they just – injuries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially to those defensive guys. So, yeah. But I'm I'm pretty happy with the Nuggets path, I guess, and hopefully we can get some, you know, health. Like people – I know Jamal and MPJ probably won't be coming back, um, so I'll just, like, not even give up my hopes for that. But, like – what I do hope for is just everybody else to stay healthy. You know, I don't yeah. want to lose like Will Barton. Somebody been run. Gordon. Yeah. Cause we need all, all those guys now. Um, but yeah, oh, man, I'll be so happy though. If it really does end like this with warriors at three and nuggets at six, uh, that'll be beautiful. Cause that's a realistic two rounds in a row that I feel pretty good about the nuggets. Honestly, um, but yeah, the Clippers are honestly also really interesting uh, now with Paul George back. 
they're a different team now. You know, they could get the, get in there at seven. Maybe they could beat the T Wolves in one game. And the one, excuse me, the one game thing is a variable that's hard to uh, predict. Predict, like, you know, yeah. You're like, I don't know, because like, I take the Wolves over the Clippers in a seven game series every time, but mm. in one game. Paul George could drop a 45, you know? We could see Pacers Paul George. Playoff mm-hmm. P, no pun intended. Not not comically, like, real yeah. playoff stud. Yeah. But not the insult. Have they officially said, like, if they somehow get through the first round or whatever, if Kawhi's going to try and play? I don't think they have. I don't, not officially, but... Because there's no... Like, I feel like they're even... I don't know. It would mess with team chemistry for sure. But like, if you let's say they get through the first round, let's just say it sits how it is now. They somehow upset Phoenix. Let's just say that happens. It sits how it is right now. Or, or they yeah. get hmm. they they get to Dallas. That'd be hilarious. Um, does Kawhi come back for that if he can? You know what I mean. And it's all hmm. an if, but it's just yeah. Interesting to see what happens. I've also heard not great things about Jamal Murray and MPJ. MPJ specifically, I've heard super not great things. Um, in as terms far as of the coming injury? back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, he's he's probably done. And then I was re- uh, reading a beat writer, and it said, like, Jamal Murray coming back to Denver could mean one of two things, very good news or very bad news. Like, they're because he, he was playing with the G League affiliate, and then he in stopped. Practice. So that was easy. Yeah. yeah. He was practicing so with that them. Was e- Yep, so that's either a good thing as in, okay, he, he's going to start practicing with the team, kind of like working his way back into things, or it could be a very bad thing is he's getting shut down for the season, doesn't matter, just come support the team in Denver. Like, it, it, it could mean one of two things on both sides. So that's what I read mm. from some Denver beat writer. I can't remember the name. Gotcha. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't – we're at about 58 minutes now. Only got two minutes left. Um, but I don't know if there's any other big nuggets, to uh, no pun intended, but big things to oh. talk about. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, sad for the Kings. Kings fans are feeling it. Uh, oh. You know, didn't even make it in the plan when they traded away their – one of their most Life. valuable assets, yeah. Just to try to get a playing spot, but they're behind the Lakers. Even they weren't really close either, which is kind of even worse. Mm-hmm. Did anybody uh, stay under twenty? No, everybody got twenty wins. Yep, Rockets are right at twenty. Magic could no, never mind. They're they have officially not hit the rover because they'd have to get to twenty three to hit the rover. And they only have one more game to play, and they're at 21. So, Oof. yeah. Pistons could Houston's hit the Houston's winning right now. Oh, really? Yeah, but anyway, do you want but to do a sign-out quick before we uh, yeah. recording? Yes, we have about 50 seconds left. So, um, I guess, I think this episode will probably just upload it. Like, I won't really do any editing. <laughs> I'll just kind of just throw it up there on the YouTubes and uh, Spotify. Um, So yeah, this is, I guess, a bonus episode since I've been uploading on Wednesdays now. Um, So yeah, another episode will come back at you on Wednesday. And keep watching the YouTube channel. I'm playing Purtle on there every day. Um, I'm having a blast watching that, by the way. Yeah, it's a good time. (laughs) Also, did I tell you that my uh, the Robert Williams day, it was a one-guesser for me? Oh, really? Uh, Because I start with uh, Celtics every day. Oh, okay. Celtics are former Celtics. So that's – it kind of narrows down if it's a Celtic, I get a better chance. But, yeah. Yeah. I haven't got a – just one uh, one out of one yet. Um, It just hit an hour, seven seconds over, and nothing happened. So I don't know whether this is being recorded or not. But uh, (laughs) I guess uh, we'll talk to you guys next time. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. Adios.